Hello, I'm Dimitar Vasile from Sofia University in Bulgaria, and I would, like, I would like to present our study on discovering the relationship between bacteriophages and antimicrobial resistance. This study was uh, done with uh, co-authors from uh, four countries, including Bulgaria, the United States, Japan, and Serbia. And I'm very happy that I can present the work of my co-authors and to attract your attention to our study. So uh, this study is uh, done within the scope of uh, MetaSub Consortium, a MetaSub project, and come the 2021 uh, project and in, in respectively come the 2021 challenges. So the main um, target of our study is to understand the relationship between the viruses and their hosts which is uh, very important in determining of uh, antimicrobial resistance and how this antimicrobial resistance is spread through phages. So the main goal is to explore also systematically the co-evolution of bacteria and their corresponding phages and potentially to be able to predict uh, anti antimicrobial resistance events from samples collected in strategic monitoring our areas all over the world. So uh, the kind of tasks in detail could be how to say listed as it is presented on the slide. So the first is uh, to discover the phages from the metagenomic samples with relevance to antimicrobial resistance, uh, followed by establishing the uh, species that may be infected by these detected uh, phages by horizontal uh, antimicrobial resistance gene, gene transfer, and um, how to apply and assess the relation mining for the occurrence of phages and bacteria in the context of the antimicrobial resistance. All it is done within the, uh, a pipeline of different statistical models and uh, approaches, and uh, these models and approaches give us an opportunity to discover phages and prophages from bacterial genomes, especially from the samples given, and to assess all the new approaches on validation and performance. So main approaches used in the study is a combination of different uh, statistical and a bit machine learning approaches. And uh, we combine these um, approaches uh, to explore further the relationship between phages and antimicrobial resistant genes. So the first, the basic approach is the compositional data analysis. Compositional data analysis is applied to use uh, specific phages in a separate samples. And after that, we uh, go to uh, estimate the diversity measures by using uh, different uh, approaches like Cheo one Shannon and Simpson. Shannon, uh, Shannon uh, is related to entropy. And uh, for better diversity of the continuous variables, we use Bray-Curtis dissimilarity metrics. After that, we, we use the penalized lasso regression to find the best predictor models or to, to, set the, to assess the feature selection for MA diversity based on the phage abundances. And finally, we use the Bayesian approach, or Bayesian first spatial, spatial model, to estimate the relative risk of phages, taking into account their host abundances. So uh, graphically, this pipeline of uh, analysis can be split in, can be pre is presented on this slide, and can be split into two phases. The upper one, I would say, in, within the rectangle, and the lower one. The upper one is, uh, how to say, to discover phages uh, relevant to antimicrobial resistance. And this phase is based on majorly on compositional data analysis. You know, compositional data analysis is a sort of analysis which is, how to say, which consists of the, the analysis of different components. And after that, these components are um, optimized. And uh, compositional data analysis is very much related to the Linear, linear optimization methodology. So compositional data analysis is a background, and from compositional data analysis, we obtain our 
composite uh, our um, uh, differential abundance and uh, from this uh, from this stage we obtain how to say where we are aiming and uh, to assess the alpha and beta diversity and um, here we use the lasso penalized regression to optimize the features or to optimize the the predictors so um, the second the, the lower the lower level this is a level which relates to the to define phages in bacteria in the context of the antimicrobial resistance and we how to say have the ratio between phages and host bacteria and we adjust this ratio to a so-called relative risk this is a parameter borrowed from the epidem epidemiology by applying Bayesian hierarchical model in the context of Bayesian spatial analysis and the use of spatial information from the origin of the sample based on the longitude and latitude of the of the of the collected sample. So, uh, mm, a few words about the data. Data is provided by the CAMDA 2021 challenge and consists of uh, 124 samples for for transport environment across all continents. And it's, it, it is conditionally divided into groups into uh, based on their antimicrobial resistance profiles. Uh, 62 samples are with high MR and 62 with low MR. And each continent is represented at least by one city. So um, we use uh, Kaiju software for genomic classifier to uh, working with uh, now with the uh, operational taxi, taxonomic units as count data, a phages taxa, and uh, this is normalized as reads per million, which extracted from the samples that showed the sequences. So um, IMR, um, the IMR anti resistance we use provided is provided from CAMDA and Pangea uh, anti resistance group profiles data, which included normalized set on of both IRG and tax classes. So compositional data analysis, I told you for all this is analysis when the, the data is presented by different components. And this analysis is based on the vector of non-negative components and showing um, by showing the relative weight or importance of this part in total. The analytical formula is, uh, which is written on the bottom of this slide is uh, based on the simplex method. You know simplex method is the basic of linear optimization. So, uh, uh, um, sorry, differentially. So the next, the next step is uh, uh, that we use um, uh, compositional data analysis for uh, our metagenomics. Uh, uh, how to say our metagenomic case study case, and uh, we have here um, metagenomics data, which are definitely compositional data since the sum of components uh, depend on the sampling procedure and data is um, data, data are very proportional uh, for these purposes we mm, use uh, air package alde x2 which is developed using bayesian methods for uh, uh, detecting uh, by testing the the the, the ANOVA type of differential expression for compositional data and here it is to compare the phases the phages abundance for high and low IMR uh, samples to find which phages there is a difference between the two groups. And uh, here we how to test it statistically. We perform Fisher exact test, which is uh, used to find possible overrepresentation of the in the family of the families of the phages taxa, the used phages taxa. So we are aiming to to uh, Differentiate the abundant phages the, and uh, what sort of statistics we applied here. I, uh, mm, how to say, uh, I, I noticed in the previous slide that this is a, a particular, um, uh, um, we use the LDX2 package from R using Bayesian methods, but from the applied compositional data we obtained. Uh, 130 phages with different two categories and one, 114 of them have significantly higher abundance by false discovery ratio in the high MR group well 22 of them are in the low uh, uh, 
are the same. When the with lower abundance are the same, okay? Amer group. And we develop from this analysis two heat maps. Two heat maps are, uh, how to say, the upper graph is scaled, uh, uh, are scaled uh, abundances, and we see the differences among the MR categories, all um, and also the continents. So the lower graph is the log scale of the raw data and shows that the family of myoviridae and sifoviridae are most abundant families, has the has has frequencies. So um, uh, going uh, further, uh, we would like to assess the, the the diversity, and we introduce two approaches: alpha diversity measures for count data and beta diversity measures for continuous data. So for alpha diversity measures, we use three different three different models: Cheo index, Shannon index, and uh, Simpson index. Uh, Shannon is uh, related to the entropy, as I told you before, but uh, as a result, we can say that uh, Shannon, both Shannon, uh, Chen 1 and Shannon put emphasis on less common taxa and Simpson more frequent taxa. So with, uh, in other words, uh, we here assess the, 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 the relationship between common and uh, rare species, species and uh, I think that uh, the following uh, graph uh, can eloquently represent what we have uh, obtained as a result. So um, on the right hand side, the triple, there is a continent uh, spread by different, uh, different bacteria. And I think that the, by, by the spread within the different uh, models and from the left hand, on the right hand side, this is the categories of high and low abundances, uh, antimicrobial resistance spread uh, over the different models. So uh, here we can say that uh, the statistics applied uh, was tested by Kruskal Wallis um, non-parametrical test where the um, where the all indexes uh, uh, show differences between the groups and for some of them for the continents. For example, CHE1 and Shannon index indexes have uh, highest significance, and Simpson significance is also close to the bond, I think, is also could be regarded as significant. So the most important here is that the, 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 the next important thing here is that the, the South America has the highest diversity measure, while the Oceania has the lowest Chevo and Shannon indexes. So the better diversity for continuous variables is uh, when only the uh, measure of presence absence the data. This is a binary similarity index and the presence of absence data are available for the species. This is very similar to Jakarta distance or Sorenson indices. These are the formulae and we use here the breaker this index and this is a quantitative similarity index when the relative abundance are available. So. Uh, uh, this break Curtis uh, analysis is uh, well presented here on this slide, where are given the constraint, uh, the constraint analysis of uh, within the within the methodology of principal coordinates. So on the left hand side, this is the categories high and low, and on the right hand side, how it is spread within the continents. You see where the continents are, are not very well presented, like a Middle East here. They have, um, how to say, uh, some different uh, uh, different presentation of the of the constraint analysis on the on this graph. So, uh, what we can say about the better diversity across the antimicrobial category and the continents? That uh, the first is that the <clears throat> African to Oceania probably phages. Uh, phage profiles are more distinct than the others and their samples are separated from other continents. It depends on the data. Probably the data was not very representative. We use here for uh, statistical testing permutational MANOVA. This is also within our environment uh, with, the, with Adonis tool library using the, which is uh, which includes this Brian Curtis, Brian Curtis dissimilarity, and we repeat this by 1,000 
permutations. So uh, the values uh, here, I can say that they are significant for both the effects. I mean, the, 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 the high and the low and the IMR category uh, for, for both IMR category and for the continents. So the next step is to assess the predictors or to make, let me say, to assess the feature selection. And for these purposes, we decided to apply the lasso regression or penalized lasso regression. Penalized lasso regression is a regularization technique which achieves accurate prediction by avoiding the overfitting of the data, which is very important in metagenomic case studies. So lasso model is applied to the phages data to predict the variation of antimicrobial resistance within the samples and subsequently um, to include the two major classes of IMR, high and low IMR. So um, the statistic, the analytical expression of this last regression is given on this, on this slide here. And uh, last regression, we can extract several conclusions about the the feature selection. So last regression in the context of machine learning, I told you in the beginning that we apply a little bit machine learning methodology. The, the current package is to select the phages that can differentiate the two categories, I mean the, lie, the high and the low, and can be used as predictors for the antimicrobial resistor start status. Here the last regression, um, how to say, uh, was very useful because it has uh, high sensitivity and specificity indexes, 90 and 95% percent, uh, respectively. The top features with no zero coefficients, as it is required by last regression, is mostly, is mostly from the most two frequent families we included further in the analysis. These are the families myovirida, myovirida and the sifovirida family. And we include also one more how to say the referent, uh, referent class, this is poduvirida family. So what happened with that? And uh, what is the further assumptions we made? So the most um, interesting thing is uh, to be able to um, answer the question, what does the association between phages and air counts mean? Is it, um, I, all of the main problem is whether the bacteriophages transmit genes or their abundance is more due to the host or due to another biological um, process like, for example, bacterial conjugation. All approaches by phases uh, by ph uh, are phages by, by themselves and to investigate the relationship between the phage, their host and the bacteria and the bacteria, uh, mm, their, their host bacteria and AMR category. And we'd like to include both phage and host bacteria in the model. So we borrowed this picture from the reference shown on the, on the bottom. And uh, for these purposes, we decided to apply a Bayesian approach to estimate the relative risks of bacterial phages. So I told you that Bayesian, this Bayesian approach is borrowed from the epidemiology. And this approach counts for spatial autocorrelation and is very common when the observations are close in space and have similar values. Spatial models such as this Bayesian hierarchical model are used in the when to, to increase the linear predictor or the accuracy of linear predictor with a set of spatially autocorrelated random effects depending on the uh, surrounding structure if differ in different uh, geographical areas. So here, Bayesian approach is introduced to estimate the relative risk, which is basically the ratio between observed and expected, taking into account um, the spatial correlation and the bacteria host when computing the ex expected. Such models are used when uh, we have, um, there is a spatial correlation and such correlation is modeled explicitly by the distribution and influence of the random effects and have and uh, which have a conditional prior. So we use for two purposes here, to involve bacteria, the host into the model, and because we have spatial data, 
with spatial autocorrelation. So the particular model of the integer hierarchical spatial, uh, spatial domain, we have models we used uh, here is the BESAC York Mollier, which, which is a co convolution model with the condition autoregressive prior. And uh, they, uh, here um, is uh, the most important thing that we have, we assume to follow Poisson distribution, the response of the model. And here we have observed, these are phages, expected the bacteria host, and the theta is the relative risk what we'd like to estimate. The analytical the analytical expression of this model is, here, it is uh, can be shown, can be seen here. This is the second line, the regression model. And here, the most important thing is that to build the, the correctly the neighboring matrix by, based on the latitude and longitude, uh, aside with the random effects for um, structures, random effects, and random effects for spatial correlation between the, between the samples. So, um, the relative risk of bacteriophages, what it gives us, uh, this is um, in phages relative risk, we, uh, how to say, uh, we set up a threshold or we set up a parameter, and if this parameter is, is higher than one and the IMR category is cred credible set, or this is a confidential interval in Bayesian statistics, does not include zero or phages abundance is higher than we would expect based on the host bacteria. And this higher risk can be partially explained by antimicrobial uh, resistance category status. So, uh, for example, we have uh, for each group, for one group, um, which is, uh, for example, high group and increased risk, while for the other group has a decreased risk relative to the expected numbers proportional to the phages host bacteria. So uh, here IMR is included in the model as a covariate, as a how to say, typical fixed effect. And for the purpose of the analysis, we make it on the how to say on the empirical studies, including two two uh, um, two bacteria, so Salmonella enterica and Staphylococcus aureus, and their corresponding phases around the virus host uh, from, from the virus host database given at the bottom of the slide. So, um, as a graphic of the result, the, the graphical um, uh, image of the result is uh, given here on this slide. We have three, uh, three different um, organisms: Staphylococcus aureus on the left side, Acinetobacter uh, baumani on the in the middle, and Salmonella enterica on the right side. So uh, everything is uh, assessed. Uh, by considering, uh, taking into account the high and low IMR and uh, splitting the continents, you see. Uh, what we can say here is that Staphylococcus and um, Acinopactibacter Baumani considers too much phages to the expected host bacteria and IMR respectively, like in Africa, South America, and North America. This is more typical for the high IMR. For low IMR, we have um, approximately, but not always, as in Asia, for example, here, um, low uh, relative risk. So more obvious differences between high IMR and low IMR and are in the South America and to some extension in Africa. So Salmonella on the right-hand side is equally or uniformly distributed across continents and across categories. Higher level of bacteria means higher level of phages. So, uh, further, uh, we can, uh, how to say, command this uh, spatial model by making some, uh, some remarks here. And uh, what is the, uh, what is the more important part that the confirmation of the model with more data or samples with spatial information will give us better results definitely, so more exact results, so no better, but, uh, but sample size differ very much within the continents, and probably this influence to the analysis. So, uh, mm, potential covariates, which can be used here, this is not only IMR category and continents and covariate, but also climate conditions and re um, different uh, relevant information 
So, and uh, this model will be good when used in close related municipalities or sites, geographical sites, so we can track how the phages evolve and their relative risk and their behavior and if their relative risk changes across the borders. So, a um, few words about phages and antimicrobial resistant genes, recent connections. So, recent studies, as the study in, of um, strange co-authors published recently in 2021 and uh, um, analyzed that the global and regional distribution of phages and their impact on the transformation of anti antimicrobial resistant genes between bacteria from the sample collected from the sewage waters. And uh, these studies show high correlation between phages and antimicrobial resistant genes and also that some phages do not depend on their host bacteria. We also observe in our analysis such correlations and the Bayesian analysis also support this, uh, their, their second observation. So uh, I think that, uh, that our results confirm to a, to, a, to, to a high extent, uh, to a large extent, uh, the results of the paper of Strange and uh, co-authors. And this is very, I would say, I think, fruitful background for future development. So uh, what we can say here for uh, phages I, uh, antimicrobial resistance genes associations, so we confirmed the results of the previous study by also finding high correlation between phages and antimicrobial resistant genes. And we can, how to say, develop here to uh, define here two major bi-clusters of strongly positive operations. Among the top correlation, this is a uh, uh, larger bi-cluster correlated mostly with the uh, myoviridium phage family and the other cluster involved genes also correlated with on the lesser extent, on the lesser extent to the CIP3 uh, family. The phages in one of the clusters are negatively correlated with the uh, antimicrobial resistant genes from the other cluster. So graphically, this is uh, presented here on this heat map where the red and yellow part, this is the, the myoviridae family and the blue one is the CIP3 family. So to summarize our study, it will be good to comment uh, that we uh, attain the goal of come the 2021 challenge to study the relationship between the phages and antimicrobial resistance and uh, the steps of the analysis of that kind of analysis we applied in the study give us a very interesting results and the pipeline was well defined and possibly then could be extended in the future but Based on the compositional differential uh, abundance analysis, we found that phages, with, uh, which differentiate from different categories of antimicrobial resistance, are, very, are highly correlated with anti antimicrobial resistance genes and overrepresented in myovirida family. This was the previous, the previous one heat map. So, as regards the differential abundance. Uh, statistics, so both alpha and beta diversity measures uh, differences between IMR categories and uh, continents, uh, with, including South America, have the highest diversity indexes than Oceania and is among the, co where, which is among the continents with lowest the diversity index. But as I told you at the beginning, uh, this is probably because of the data Oceania is represented only by one city, one group of samples. So, uh, top features selected by lasso regression or top uh, or best uh, predictors estimated by lasso regression achieve very high separation of this high and low or confirm very high separation of these high and low categories. And um, at the end, uh, Bayesian spatial analysis help us very much to examine uh, does the phages evolved across, us, across our spatially correlated samples using both phages and host abundances. So basic spatial analysis give us information about the, the correlation, the relation between phages and host abundances. So 
Mm, very interesting will be to discuss here on this forum the future directions of our work. I uh, I suppose that uh, future on such a large wide background, future directions can be of different value in different ways, but definitely there is a lot of new directions, new rooms for development. First of all, we'll be very happy to use a larger data set for viruses and phages. And as a first step, we'll make a sort of uh, interface for data integration from different databases. This will be done in future. So um, definitely it will be quite better to use more samples. Uh, for example, equal number of low and high samples within each continent this will give better estimation of, of differential abundance at high, high and low antimicrobial resistance level. And to extend the model, include the interactions between the IMR category, high or low, and the geographical locations. And a uh, good step will be to find possible bi-clicks or interactions between phages, phages and antimicrobial resistant genes. The another very important and very interesting step towards the extension of our analysis will be how we can include um, the um, relevant coverage in the Bayesian model. I told you that we can extend the Bayesian model by including different correlations like the climate, some other effects which can be recorded. And uh, this will give us additional ways to define the expected phage abundance better or more, more accurate. So um, our assumption is that the, the background of the study is how to say, give us a lot of opportunities to work and to collaborate with everybody who would like to, to share our manner of research. So uh, finally, I would like to acknowledge the support and the collaboration with the MetaSub project and the um, MetaSub challenge from where we, how to say, extract or collect all the data. Very important in our study, this is the CAMDA forum or the CAMDA meetings every year within, within the frame of uh, ISCB, ISMB conferences, a World Congress. And we'd like to, 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 to to thank for Sofia University for the uh, support and for the, how to say, understanding of um, our research. Uh, finally, I would like to thank all the audience for the attention and for the patience, for the patience they, um, how to say, share with us to listen our presentation to the end. And I am open to, and my colleagues definitely are open to all your questions, comments, Suggestion, suggestions. Thank you very much once again.